Hey everybody, Jim the Tabletop Engineer here and welcome to a brand new episode. I am in my new workshop. It is not where I want it to be yet uh, in terms of layout and things like that. It's still very cluttery, but I am able to actually get some work done. Now I do apologize for the graininess or fuzziness of the video. Right now I am trying to figure out how I'm going to wire up this workshop for sound and video. And so I'm using a, a webcam right now, which just isn't the greatest. So I'm, I do apologize for that. But the idea is that um, I'm, I've got some money and I'm getting ready to invest in some better uh, sound and video equipment uh, that will, that will be um, somehow integrated into my workshop. I do have a new workbench, but this workbench is only about two feet deep. This is what I plan on doing crafting on. What I have been wanting for a long time, however, is a game table. Now, I'm not talking about one of those like six feet by 10 feet game tables where everybody sits around and plays RPGs, although I'd love something like that, but I'm not talking about something that crazy or that ornate. What I'm talking about is just building from some simple materials like two by fours and some plywood. I have been wanting to build a gaming table I'm probably going to go like four feet by four feet and I may actually have a second layer on it for where you would put like the terrain and stuff so your notes and things could, you know, your dice and everything could remain on the lower section. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, I have right here in front of me an open area that is always going to be open. I'm hoping to have some camera mounts uh, in here to focus on this central area. So this is where the gaming table, not this, this is gonna be over here to the side, but my gaming table is gonna be right here in the center. And so I need to design the gaming table that I want. Now, I have been learning a program called SketchUp. Uh, it's kind of like a CAD app. Uh, people do all kinds of design work in it, uh, but a lot of people work in wood. They'll design you know, a table or a desk or whatever in SketchUp. And then SketchUp can spit out like, the, the cuts and the lengths of the lumber and all that good stuff. I'm not there yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my favorite CAD app right now, which is Tinkercad, and I'm going to design my work table in Tinkercad, and I'll be able to get the dimensions of my cuts and things from that. And I'll share that with you once I have those things. But enough talk. Uh, I need to get my gaming table built. So this first video of probably a two or three part series the first video I'm going to show you is me designing the work table in uh, Tinkercad and then I'll take those uh, dimensions and pieces and get started on the actual physical build. Let's get to my tabletop, my desktop, my computer desktop and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm going to be using Tinkercad for this, and Tinkercad will not let you build big objects. It doesn't really work for anything more than 40 inches. So what I've done is I'm using millimeters, and one millimeter equals one foot. So if I were to 3D print this, it would be very tiny. So what I'm doing here is I'm just base, I'm basically creating the, the basic building blocks, the 2x4, uh, the plywood. I'm going to be using plywood that's one half inch thick. So I'm going to take this piece, uh, it's my 4x4 four four tabletop, and I make it 0.5 millimeters, which corresponds to half an inch. That red object you see sitting there is a 2x4. Now, in the U.S., a 2x4 is not really 2 inches by 4 inches. It's 1.5 inches by 3.5 inches, and then you can buy it in various lengths. So I'm just creating my basic uh, building blocks here. And I'm going to use one of the features of Tinkercad, which is to make these pieces sort of translucent so you can kind of see under them and things like that. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm taking one of my 2x4 pieces, and I won't be changing the dimensions, the 1.5 by 3.5, but I will be changing the length. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the frame that goes underneath the tabletop. Now, later on, you're going to see I'm going to duplicate everything here, so I'm going to have two of everything. That's because I'm going to have a tabletop, and on the bottom, I'm going to have a duplicate of the tabletop that's flipped 180 degrees, and that's going to form my storage uh, beneath the table. So right now, I've got two 48-inch length 2x4s on the left and right side. Now, remember, these are 1.5-inch uh, thick. 
So I can't just slap another four inch or 48 inch uh, piece. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shrink these one and a half inch on each side or three inches total. And that makes a 45 inch uh, piece here. And then I just uh, duplicate it and it will go on the other side. Now, I don't want this, uh, I don't want this top piece to, to sag. So I'm going to put a bracer piece in the middle here that's also 45 inches. Now later in the video you'll see where I'm going to be pulling all these pieces apart so that I can inventory the parts that I'll need to cut. But right now, again, I'm just building my game table uh, to, to sort of see how it's going to look. I truly am doing this as, as you're you know, seeing me do this. This is when I designed it. I, didn't, I did not design this on paper. The only thing I decided on was that it would be um, 4 feet by 4 feet, uh, have a 2 by 4 frame, and I also decided it was going to be 37 inches tall, and I have a set of 5-inch um, wheels, uh, casters, that when mounted are actually 6.1 inches. So with that much information, I, I set about creating this table. Now here I am making everything translucent. And again, I'm doing this so that you can just sort of, I'll be able to see underneath it um, and, and just sort of have an idea uh, of, of how the structure is going to look. So what I'm doing now is um, I, I rotated the tabletop upside down. So the frame is on the bottom and the half inch plywood is on top. And then I need to raise this up to um, 37 inches. However, it's not really 37 inches. It turns out that Tinkercad measures from the bottom. So if you'll remember, this whole thing is 3.5 inches for the uh, height of the two by four frame and then a half inch for the plywood on top. So I actually had to lower this um, just a little bit to, um, to get it to um, 33 inches. 33 plus three and a half plus a half inch sheet of plywood on top is 37 inches. So the very top of this, of this uh, game table will be 37 inches from the floor. Now, if you're short, this may be too high. If you're really tall, this may be too, too short, uh, not tall enough. I measured this based on my experience at a gaming table. I have a table in my workshop that's 37 inches, and I love that height. So what I'm doing now is I'm making the casters. This is just a representation of the casters. They, it's not going to be you know accurate and look like the real thing. It's just something that allows me to uh, use the width, the height, and all that good stuff. Now, as I told you, the caster is a five inch uh, diameter wheel, but it also has a framework that will attach to the base and that m brings the entire thing to 6.1 inches. And I'm not gonna attach the caster directly to the bottom of the, uh, of the base. Instead, I'm going to add a half inch thick square um, just to give it more wood to go through, more um, something, you know, when I'm going to be screwing this into the bottom and I want it to be very solid and not, uh, not break. So I decided to go ahead and add another uh, half inch on top of that. So five, um, the, uh, the five inch caster goes to 6.1 inches with the, the whole piece of the caster. I add another half inch, which takes it to uh, six point what was that, 6.6, 6. excuse me. And then I have to later add in the half inch thick piece of plywood that forms the bottom of the base. So that's another half inch. So all in all, we're looking at a 7.1 inch uh, distance from the floor to the very bottom of the wood base of the gaming table. I know this is a lot of information for you, and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of doing this very quickly, but hopefully it will make sense as you watch more of the video. So what I'm doing here is I made a, an exact copy of the base. I told you it was going to have two of everything, pretty much. And I'm going to flip this 180 degrees, and I'm going to center it with the top piece. And I'm going to center it because I'm going to use 2 by 4s as legs uh, that are going to be mounted to the top and the bottom on the inside, which means I'm going to have this 1.5 inch... Uh, overhang from the legs. And if that doesn't make sense, just keep watching. So, so I've lowered the base down to the ground, but remember, I need, I need it to come up uh, 7.1 inches, actually 6.6 .6 inches. Um, so I made a mistake here. I typed 7.1, but later I caught my error and I changed it to 6.6. Um, to .6. And I did that by removing 
That piece right there, that orange top piece, is one inch. I actually stripped off a half inch from it because uh, that half inch that I added, it was part of the base, part of that red base there. So don't worry about that right now. Just know I fixed it later. So once these pieces are lined up, now I need to determine how long to cut the, um, the legs, the 2 by 4 legs. So the distance uh, between the bottom red base and the top, uh, see-through base will be the distance that I need to, uh, or the length that I need to cut the two by fours. Now I'm going to make my my legs out of two. Each each of the four corners, the four legs, is actually going to be two two by fours. I'm going to make them into an L shape. You'll see this shortly. But right now, what I'm doing is just for looks. I want to see what this is going to look like. I am taking the two by four. And I'm just trying to get it, you know, right into the corner there where it's going to be um, flush with uh, both of the, uh, the frame pieces, the, the bottom and the one on the right there, the two by four pieces that make the frame. So there I'm pretty happy. So now I'm just stretching it up and I'll need to look at this from the side. And that's why I made it translucent so I can look through and go, oh, yes, it's just touching the, um, the top of the plywood. So now I know the, the length of my two by four. So um, it turned out, uh, remember, I need it to be 7.1 inches above the, uh, above the ground. And again, if you look careful, you'll notice I fixed the uh, casters here. So uh, all I'm doing right here, again, is th I think this is actually where I discovered my error. So I had to go back and redo the, uh, the length of the um, 2x4. So once I got it, I stretched it up. It turns out that the, uh, the 2x4 is going to need to be, I think, 34 point nine inches uh, uh it says 28 yeah 29.4 excuse me 29.4 inches so once i came up with that i made a copy of it and i rotated that copy 90 degrees uh, i did this from zero on the work plane just to make it easier um, so i put all these if you'll notice all the ones uh, four corners there are are in each of the corners and then i i made a copy and i rotate it 90 degrees and this piece will butt up against uh, one of the 2x4s, and I'll do this on all four corners. This just strengthens the entire table. If you go look at YouTube videos where people make workbenches and things like that, you will see this is a typical way of doing it. You could just do it with those single 2x4s, but you're, the 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 side-to-side uh, -side movement of the, of the uh, workbench could be slightly noticeable. What this does by making it an L bracket is it strengthens the entire thing in both directions, left, right, forward, and back. Um, it's kind of hard to explain until you actually build it, and then you understand that, that uh, it, it will strengthen the entire table. Now, what I'm not showing here is how everything's connected. I'll be using something called pocket screws, uh, pocket holes, uh, for attaching all this stuff, and you'll see that in the actual videos where I'm actually building this table. So right now I'm just making copies of all those 2x4s that will um, go into the corners. And here you go. I've got, uh, I've got the table is pretty much uh, the way I like it. Um, however, I am going to put in a center brace. See the center 2x4 running down the, the red and the, and the, the uh, see-through part? I am going to, I need to size a 2x4 a that I'm going to um, attach to the bottom brace and the top brace in the center of the table. And that will just help prevent the, um, the tabletop from ever sagging. Um, I don't anticipate putting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds on top of this, but it's just a good practice to always reinforce your, your, uh, your structures um, where you can. And this is an easy one. I'm just going to put it right there in the center. And uh, it, it, it's not exactly in the center, but I'll measure when I'm actually building this, and it'll be right there in the center. All right, so now what you see me doing is taking it all apart. When I was happy, once I was happy with the table, I made a copy of it. You can see the original back in the back there. And now I'm just stripping it down. I start pulling off all the pieces. And what this is going to let me do is get an inventory, a count of how many pieces are going to be at, say, 45 inches, how many pieces are going to be at 48 inches. I have that one center brace, which is a unique piece. It has a, it has a, a, a length that there's only one piece of that. Um, I'll also have the little uh, squares that go above the casters that I'll have to cut. So here I am just pulling off uh, various pieces. And in just a minute, you'll see, I'm not going to waste your time here, but as you can see, here it is. It's all laid out. 
So now I know how long all of the pieces are, mainly the two by fours. I can go and I can determine what I need to buy. Do I need to buy two by four by 10 feet long pieces? Do I need to buy two by four by eight length pieces? I will play with these um, with these lengths and I'll try to optimize it so that I I have to buy the, the minimum amount of lumber. And um, again, once I make the plans available, uh, you'll you'll see how those cuts are made. And here it is, I've colored it. I wanna paint the top black and the rest of it white and the wheels are red. Those are just the casters I have. So there you go. That is the gaming table that I'm going to build. It's going to require four pieces of two by four of 10 foot length, and I believe three pieces of two by fours at eight foot length. That's minimizing the amount of wasted wood. And then of course, I'm gonna need some half inch plywood, but you'll, I'll cover all that in the videos where I actually build the work table. So anyway, I want to thank you for uh, joining me uh, in this new video series. Thank you for joining me in my new workshop. I'm really glad to be having a space again. I, it's been a couple months since we sold the house and, and I had to pack up everything and I just haven't had a place to work. Uh, I was working from like a ping pong table for a while or a pool table and from a couch. And so now I have my workshop back. And so I'm, I've got some uh, video projects uh, already in the works that I've been working on that I will be slowly releasing. I would like to invite all of you, uh, if you are not familiar with the Tabletop Crafters Guild, which is a Facebook page, uh, I'm one of the guild masters uh, on that page. We uh, are, I think, over 38,000 members now. And it's basically just like-minded individuals who like to craft for the games they play. And the the group is growing like crazy. I, I, I'm Every time I check in, I'm just like, wow, we just keep growing and growing and growing. So I do welcome the new members, but if you are not a member and you are a member of Facebook, please come join us, Tabletop Crafters Guild. People post photos, they post projects that they're working on, they post questions. Um, we, we just try to support one another uh, in our hobbies, and it's just a nice group of fellow crafters, and I think you're gonna like it if you're not already a member. All right, that's it for this video. This is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. I will be back next week with a crafting video. The game table videos, I'll probably be just releasing them as they're done. So they may be coming out every day. So I hope you do enjoy them. But I am ready to come back with some crafting videos. So check back next Wednesday and I should have something for you. Again, this is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Everybody, take care. Each month, Bexham's Bazaar RPG and Wargaming Magazine provides gamers with articles, props to print and cut out for players, mini adventures, new monsters, and much more. Look in the description below for details on how to get a few free issues so you can see what you're missing.